Hi, welcome to the Mammalogy Prep Lab. My name is Colleen Buchanan, and I'm an undergraduate research assistant and collections assistant. For Discovery Day, instead of being in this room, I'm going to take you out to the collection space to show you some specimens I've pulled. <laughs> Here in Dyke, we don't have most of our collection, which is in another building, but we do still have some specimens in this space. To start off, I'll talk about some of the stuff I pulled. So this, a lot of people don't know, this is whale baleen. And what's interesting about this for an amazing adaptation is whales used to be land mammals in the artiodactyl group, and their closest living relative is actually a hippo. And so when they went back into the water, instead of having teeth, or some of them do, but the toothless whales, they have baleen, which is just keratin that's formed into sheets and then kind of frilled out like this so they can filter feed all the krill that they eat. And I have a picture so it's easier to visualize. Okay, this little guy, I think we all recognize. It looks like a beaver. It has a lot of same features as a beaver, but it's not related to the beaver that well. This is a platypus. It's kind of like an amalgamation of a bunch of different animals. These guys are funny because they actually lay eggs. It's a monotreme. And this guy also has webbed feet because it lives in the water. It has a bill, like a duck, where it can actually sense electromagnetic senses in the water, like pulses, to see where prey is. And on their hind legs, they have stingers where they can sting you. You know, it's venom, it's kind of crazy. Beavers are found in Kansas, and you can see as a rodent, they have these crazy big incisors that they can cut, and you know that they're cutting down the trees with them and everything. And their fur is super dense for letting them be in the water and stay warm. And they also have webbed feet. They don't have any stingers, plus this scaly back tail, which helps them swim. Also found in Kansas are these crazy good diggers. And you can see by their huge claws on their feet. They're really fast at digging. And they've also been known to sometimes team up with um, coyotes to get prey. And the coyotes will track down the animal because they're speedy and they're quick. And a lot of times the badger will prevent the animal from going into a burrow or something. And so they kind of help each other out. They have carnivorous teeth. Imagine just like smaller not quite coyote, but like smaller type dog teeth. And this little guy, also found in parts of Kansas, is a kangaroo rat. You can see by their super long tails that kind of bunch out at the end here and their really long feet. They can jump up to nine feet. Like imagine that, this little guy, nine feet. And they also don't have to drink water. So they lived in the desert system and they found a way to just get the water that they need through the seeds that they eat. And this guy is a large brown bat found in Kansas. And of course, we can't talk about amazing adaptations without talking about that mammals were able to adapt to fly. And they usually fly at night. And they're different to bird flying to where um, if you see something flying that's a lot choppier and they go back and forth in different directions, it's usually a bat where birds are a little bit more graceful. They also have something called where they use echolocation to see. So because at night they can't really see that well, and so they'll use little clicks and little tiny sounds out of their mouths, which will then bounce off whatever is in front of them and come back into their ears. A lot of times you see a lot of bats with crazy looking ears or weird noses to kind of have those sounds in different ways that they come back to them. So these three guys are all gliding mammals, all come from different parts of the world. And so that's something called convergent evolution when they have similar environments, but they all, not related, adapt similar qualities. So this is a flying lemur, but it's not actually a lemur, and it's found in places like Indonesia and Southeast Asia. You can see the size of that thing and how they have webbed hands but also you can see how the skin stretches out all along towards their tail so they can glide great distances. And colugos are herbivorous too. So they leave shoots 
in the fruit. A similar adaptation was found in Australia, the sugar gliders. And we have all heard of these things. Sometimes they're kept as household pets. You can see they have great claws for attaching onto the trees. And their skin also comes out on their arms, but not so much behind the tail. And these guys eat things like fruit or pollen and nectar. Native to Kansas, little do people know, are the gliding squirrels, flying squirrels. And they have similar tails to the sugar gliders and similar claws where they can attach onto the trees and just slightly different in the appearance of how the skin comes off the body. And these guys eat like what squirrels usually eat, seeds and nuts. And behind these doors, everyone enjoys this guy. Our friend, the polar bear. Now, everyone thinks their fur is white, but it's actually, they have black skin with hollow hairs. And this helps them for when they're swimming. It's really good at insulation. And it works out because it looks white and it camouflages them with their background in the Arctic. Now, you all just got a sneak peek of our over 180,000 specimens in the Mammalogy collection. Thanks for joining us and have a wonderful discovery day.